What's going on YouTube? It's your guy Chris and I'm back with another video for you guys today. But before we hop into things, I want to give a quick rundown on just some major things that happened in my life recently. So number one, I graduated. I no longer have to worry about school. That's a big W. Uh, moving on. Number two, Year 500 is live. And if you don't know what that is, it was my senior capstone game project where I got a chance to develop with the Breakers Entertainment. Shout out to them. Um, which features sword combat, magic, and a mysterious storyline. It's free on Steam right now. You can download it. Um, I'll probably be showing footage of it right here. Um, I had to drop a lot to make it happen. Um, and all the team sacrificed a lot to make it happen. So it would just mean a lot to us if you guys could check it out. Um, shout out to Fluffy Panda. I think is what his name is on YouTube. I'm sorry if I butchered that. Um, for posting a full playthrough of Year 500 on YouTube. And also shout out to my boy Infamy for speedrunning it. And uh, he got a sub 10 minute run. That's actually kind of insane. Um, so shout out to him for getting that, man. Um, I got to try my hand at speed running, but either way, um, shout out to those guys. I'll have their channels in the description. Um, and also for more year 500 content, my friend Michael Harris, he made a production documentary on our process for making the game. Um, and we also have a 100% original soundtrack. Uh, all of the songs have been produced by either Ian Thomas, myself, or the Memento Band. Um, all links of that will be down below, including that production documentary. Lastly, for Year 500, and I, this is the last thing, um, we have an art book. So look out for our art book. We plan on dropping that on Amazon this month. I'll keep you guys updated on everything going forward. Um, I'm super excited. This is going to be like the first time I'll be able to tangibly hold like my art in a book, like a physical book. So that's really cool, um, along with all the other artists on the team. But um, super exciting stuff. Shout out to Russell. Um, you know who you are uh, for being the author for the book. But yeah, we're going to uh, update you guys on that moving forward. But I think that's it. So without further ado. Let's start the video. <laughs> Okay, so for the concept, I'm somewhat of a weirdo when it comes to how I make my stories. I don't really think of a concept and then form a story around it. I kind of do the opposite. I think of interesting characters and character dynamics that I think are, you know, interesting. <laughs> and I form a story around that instead. Um, and this story was no different. I was literally taking a break from my year 500 work and decided to sketch out some adult looking characters. That was literally the whole concept is like, I just want to draw adult characters. And somehow a story kind of formed around that. Um, and I decided to move forward with it uh, for a an actual game. Um, I knew specifically I wanted to make a visual novel with these characters. So I made sure to reference how popular visual novels that I enjoyed like Danganronpa, Phoenix Wright tackled their character designs to give every character something unique that kind of defines them. So for me, the story becomes infinitely easier to script and visualize when I can see these characters um, in, in, in a space, um, which is why drawing out the characters is kind of a must for someone like me, because um, otherwise it's hard to like kind of keep track of who's who, what's what, and uh, certain things that I may include in the, des the design itself, right? Um, but the story uh, at its most basic form is about a group of undead adults who must confront their darkest truths in order to revive themselves from an untimely death. Um, I wanted a concept that kind of tightly knits a lot of characters together naturally, so there's a faint connection between most of the members here, but I won't spoil too much about it right now. In terms of scope, this is one of my bigger stories, mainly due to the fact that I want to have four different endings, um, but we'll see. Uh, that may get scoped down to two, depending on how I feel. Um, but four is the plan right now. Um, but yeah, on to the next section. So for the actual writing of the visual novel, I use Google Docs. Oh yes, God, I know, God. I know. Oh, word is better. I know, I know word is better. I don't care. Um, mainly just because I find Google Docs very easy to use on the go. Um, it syncs up to all my electronic devices. Um, it's very easy to just pick up my phone and write out a scene in Docs. Um, and I'm sure other apps can do something pretty similar, if not better. I'm just used to Google Docs, so it's like, yeah, I'll just use Google Docs. Um, and I format my uh, scripts in a way to where I can copy and paste the text into Tierno Builder pretty easily. I'll show probably like an example of how I have my script uh, plotted out. And yeah, that's kind of like how I do the writing for the most part. I won't talk too much about the actual uh, implementation into Tierno Builder since I haven't done much work uh, in Tierno Builder for this specific project yet. But I highly recommend Tierno Builder if anyone is interested in making visual novels, by the way. I've made a few very bad ones um, a couple years ago. And like, yeah, I, I, I really recommend it. It's definitely uh, super beginner friendly and uh, if you're just getting into visual novels or you want to start, like that's a very great place to start. 
um, but yeah, uh, Tyrion Better. <laughs> but um, I loosely followed or loosely formed an outline for the story, filled everything out with scenes, and that's kind of how I've been tackling the writing process. Then once uh, I had fleshed out my scenes, I well, the next step would be implementation, which we haven't gotten to yet. So I'd say in terms of progress, I'm about a fourth of the way done, um, as I just kind of concluded a major story beat the other day. And I'll give you guys more updates on my writing progress in future devlogs, but that's kind of the update for this specific section. So for the designs, as I said before, I wanted to give each character something that makes them different, whether that's the hairstyle, body type, skin tone, or an interesting silhouette. I try to make sure characters don't feel too similar to each other. That's a problem I definitely had in the past with my designs that I've really been trying to break um, recently. Um, and I especially took more liberties on the side characters since I really got a chance to like do wacky uh, stuff with their silhouette um, and their designs and I, I feel like I made them super interesting and those are probably the most enjoyable characters to draw all in all. I'd say about midway through this dev sprint I realized I wanted to alter the way the visual novel came across from a presentational standpoint and I decided to go for a more low res slash handheld console look like how Phoenix Wright looked on the 3DS or sorry the DS not the 3DS um maybe was it I don't know um I made the decision mainly due to me loving the aesthetic of late 90s slash early 2000s video games which is where the uh or the time frame that the story takes place in but also because I don't really see that style as often in visual novel visual novels these days oh my god I can't speak um and it's a really cool aesthetic. I think it really sells that video game look quite easily. Um, and it's underutilized. Like, I know some visual novels uh, use it, but, like, I don't see it a lot, you know. So I kind of wanted to go for that aesthetic. And the other reason is because I'm, I'm, I want to develop this game for phones. And I think the aesthetic would really make players feel as though they're playing the game on a retro handheld console, like the PSP, for instance. So I think uh, those two uh, uh, philosophies were the reason why I, I decided to go with uh, the the retro aesthetic <laughs> okay so for sprites you probably already know how i made them um if you don't i made two full videos of my process for making sprites which will be linked down below um i went with the modular sprite functionality process which allows me to make multiple sprites off of one bit or multiple poses sorry off of one base um and I think for the full game, I'd like for at least two bases for like all of the main characters. So that get, that gives all of them like two poses to essentially have that are just base and then they'll have multiple poses that stem from those poses, if that makes sense. Watch my videos to get what I'm talking about. But yeah, I wanna have at least two bases for the main characters to give them more range of movement. Um, but again, since this is a solo venture and this is something I'm gonna be developing purely on my own with no outside help, I if I have to cut stuff I'm gonna cut stuff and that'll be stuff I cut it definitely isn't necessary to, to get the point across um, it just be really cool but um in terms of like progress of the actual sprites themselves here are all the sprites I have so far so first up we have Luna the flight attendant we have Ricky the boxer Azalea's the bartender Mia the college student Gian the Bowser I'm not kidding he's a uh, like a uh, mafia member I'm not gonna you know spoil too much about him but you know evil looking guy uh, and then for side characters, we have April, Angela, Bing Bong. <clears throat> um, I don't even know if I have Bing Bong record. I, I have him started. I don't know if I saved the picture, but I'll, I'll share it if uh, it's here. But um, yeah, those are like all of the sprites I have so far. I still have a lot of like side characters to finish up, but I'm hoping by the next devlog, I'll have most of them at least sketched out, um, if not finished. Um, and I'll be able to like show you guys the rest of those. Um, but yeah. For canvas sizes, I still need to adjust how, um, or at least in the final uh, look, I'll need to adjust the canvas size. I'm thinking like maybe a 300 by 300 canvas size should scale it down enough to get the look that I want um, for the characters on um, that pixelated look. But again, that'll be stuff that I'll kind of hammer out in the next devlog. Um, I've been kind of able to get away with just uh, downscaling my high res uh, sprites and then loosely eyeballing it but i do want to get like an actual concrete process down so i'll update you guys on that in the next devlog okay so because 
of the style that I wanted to go for, I figured the fastest way to make low res backgrounds was to use Unity. Um, that way I could make multiple backgrounds for any scene in the game that I wanted to. And I've been really fighting the urge to make it a movable visual novel where the player can explore different areas, but I stopped myself from doing that since that was outside of the scope of this project and it wasn't really necessary to get the, the, the story across, so I just decided to cut that. Uh, maybe next time. But for the actual process, I opened up a Unity project and imported a bunch of free assets either from the Unity store, Sketchfab, or TurboSquid, and populated the levels with the assets to get the game to look how I, or sorry, to get the look that I wanted. Um, these assets range from skyboxes, models, and textures, all of which were pretty low effort to set up. And then from there, I set up a few cameras to get some cool shots and some angles I thought could work for some of the scenes. And I managed to get a lot of progress done on the backgrounds in a very short turnaround time. I think all of these were done in like the span of like maybe two hours. So um, really, really, it was really fast. Um, and uh, my friend, Mitch Maki, fellow YouTuber, he actually uh, has a video on this very topic of making uh, Unity backgrounds, but it's specifically for web comics. But you can apply it to visual novels as well. It's really uh, it, it you can apply it to both. Um, and he kind of goes more in depth than I am right here. But if you want more uh, information on like this whole pipeline, this whole process, definitely check that video out. And it provides really good insights on the utilities of Unity. But yeah, moving on. After I got a few good backgrounds, I pixelated them to achieve that 2000s handheld game look using Pixelead.com. I think is how you say it. Um, but Honestly, almost every imaging software has like a pixelate function, so you can use Photoshop, InShot, or even Procreate, I think, to get this effect. It's really up to you. Um, I mainly just wanted to stay on my laptop, and I didn't have Photoshop downloaded, so I ended up using Pixelate, which did, you know, the job pretty good. So, But yeah, from there, I was finally able to get a good basis on the backgrounds and the sprite styling that I felt I can kind of come back and easily replicate the rest of the things that I needed. Um, so yeah, I kind of stopped there for the sprite work and focused on other things. I do love to make music. Um, most of my games have original music. I think, honestly, all of the games that I've made have original music by me in some shape or form, um, just because I love making the music. But um, if I didn't do art, I'd probably be seriously pursuing like my passion for producing music. Uh, but that aside, um, the actual producing of the music, I, I use FL Studio, and I've been using it since uh, I was a senior in high school. Um, and I know my way around that program pretty well, so I decided, yeah, I think I can use FL Studio to produce most of the tracks for this game, um, and, you know, it, it, it'll turn out fine. <laughs> um, but in terms of the styling of the music or the genre that I wanted to go for, I had kind of no idea starting out. Um, like, I, I love, like, you know, the, like, I know for action games, drum and bass is, like, my go-to. That's what I kind of ended up doing for Year 500. Um, for visual novels, I always like to take it a step back and do more chill stuff, so I was thinking more chill hop. Um, would kind of work but then I started really thinking about you know the look of the game and the feel of the game and I realized that you know maybe like something that's more akin to the games of the 90s slash early 2000s will kind of work for the soundtrack so I, uh, I I went into FL Studio and I ended up applying a mini synth plugin to the melodies that I was creating um, to get this kind of effect that makes it sound like it's straight out of like a, a, a Game Boy or not a Game Boy maybe more so like a like a DS or a PSP, you know, somewhere around that uh, genre of, uh, or, or era of games um, to kind of get this effect. And I think, um, you know, it makes the game feel more retro. And um, yeah, I, I, I really loved how it turned out. Here's like a quick sample of how uh, one of the tracks turned out. And all of the tracks are gonna sound similar to this in, in, uh, in styling, you know, so yeah. So yeah, I think look dev is probably the funnest part. That's not a word. I think look dev is probably the, the most fun part of this process because it involves how uh, seeing how everything meshes together. Um, in my case, I didn't want to import all of my assets into Tyranno Builder just yet because I still wanted to kind of see how everything looked um, from a external viewpoint and like a, just an overall look. And then if it worked, then I knew it would work in engine. 
And again, because I was developing for phones and I already figured out my dimensions for how big the screen size would be and how big my canvas space would be, I was able to quickly uh, replicate that canvas size in my editing program, slap together uh, a background and then the sprite on top. And then I also just uh, grabbed a placeholder text box to kind of uh, show where the text box would be. That's not the final text box, but it'll look something like this where it's pixelated. Um, and then yeah, I added uh, some music in the background to kind of see how the vibes of the of the game and see how it will kind of look. Um, and here are, are a few samples of that, and I think it uh, it, it looks amazing. So. Okay, yeah, so outro and closing thoughts. All in all, I wanted to make this devlog to mark my progress publicly on one of my personal projects. I think it's very important for someone like me to share publicly since I tend to be secretive about the stuff I work on and ultimately end up giving up on a lot of projects. You know, I don't like that about myself, but that's what happens a lot of the time. Um, and that results in a lot of hours of work that just go on team. And I wanted to at least put this out there to show the stuff that I'm currently doing and at least kind of mark, you know, my progress. And, you know, like uh, show people that, hey, you know, I mean, I'm not I'm not just falling off the earth. Like if I don't post for a minute, I'm always working on something. But if I don't post, it may be because I gave up or maybe because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working on a video like this. Right. Um, but, you know, I always found like those devlog kind of uh, content uh, videos to be pretty entertaining, you know, because I really enjoy learning about the process of how people make their games almost as much as I like playing those games themselves. And I figure people probably feel the same way. Um, another thing I've been doing is tracking my time on this project, seeing how long it takes me to do certain tasks. I realized that doing this really increases my productivity and also helps me not think about the amount of work that needs to be done, but rather the amount of work I can do within a certain set of time. For instance, I decided a while back that at hour 60 of this project, I'd make a devlog video to mark my progress. And I, I felt like any project going forward, every 60 hours, I would at least make a small video or a small like uh, just shout out of, hey, here's all the stuff I'm working on um, to kind of like show what I'm doing. So that at least there's a public record that, hey, here's, uh, you know, my progress at this set time, you know. Um, and I think that was just another good habit to start doing moving forward because uh, it really makes a difference when it comes to my motivation on things, especially since I used to not track time. So it used to be really hard how much. It used to be really hard to figure out how much time I would put into things, you know. Um, but, you know, now that I'm consistently tracking, it's very easy to see, OK, here, I, I made it here at hour 60. So that's that's a really good uh, marker to kind of keep track of, you know, how fast I do certain things. But, um, yeah, that was just kind of my closing thoughts on a lot of this stuff. I wanted to share, uh, again, all of this with you guys. I know it's been a minute. Um, I can't promise anything in terms of regular uploads because, again, I'm still kind of in the heat of uh, moving and doing a lot of things. But I know in the future devlogs, I want to share more specific things about this project. I kind of gave you guys the general overview of a lot of things. But yeah, next project or next devlog will be way more specific about certain things that I'm implementing and certain things that I'm doing. So look out for that. But um, until then, it's been your boy Chris. Thank you for watching. And I'm out. Peace.